Hello guys, it's my hope that you're doing well. Welcome back to Miss Fountain channel. In this session, we are going to look at forensic DNA analysis. And under forensic DNA analysis, we're going to look at methods used for forensic human identification. There are two important categories of tandem repeats that have been used widely in forensic genetics. The first one is mini satellites, also referred to as variable number tandem repeats, that is VNTRs. And you also have micro satellites, which are also referred to as short tandem repeats, commonly abbreviated as STRs. We're going to begin with variable number tandem repeats, that is VNTRs. Find that variable tandem variable number tandem repeats were the first polymorphisms used in DNA profiling, and they were successfully used in forensic casework for several years. The use of VNTRs was, however, limited by the type of sample that could not be successfully analyzed because a large amount of high molecular weight DNA was required. Also, interpreting VNTR profiles could be pro problematic. Therefore, their use in forensic genetics has now been replaced by short tandem repeats, that is STRs. And on short tandem repeats, STR, they are currently the most commonly analyzed genetic polymorphism in forensic genetics. The number of repeats in STR markers can be highly variable among individuals. And this makes STR to be effective for human identification purposes. That is because they can be highly variable. STR repeats, STR repeat sequences are usually named by the length of each repeat unit like now we have the, the nucleotide repeats which have two nucleotide repeated next to each other over and over again we have trinucleotides they have three nucleotides in the repeat units tetranucleotides have four pentanucleotides have five Hexanucleotides have six repeats in the in the core repeat. That is in the in the repeat unit. Tetranucleotides repeats have become the most popular STR markers for human identification. We also find that STR loci are spread throughout the genome, including the twenty-two autosomal chromosomes and the X and Y sex chromosomes. They have a, a core unit of between 1 to 6 BPN and the repeats typically range from around 50 to 300 BPN. And the majority of the loci that are used in forensic genetics are tetranucleotide repeats which have a 4-base a pair repeat motif. ST, the uses of STR find that STR profiles obtained from biological samples that are found at crime scenes are compared with other profiles of known suspects, that is, the known and the unknown are compared and are identified by police or are included in a national forensic DNA database. So they are comparable they're in the database. Also, STR profiling is used in paternity or maternity testing, disaster victim identification, rape, rape perpetrators identification, kinship testing, and many more. And due to the fact that STR profiles, due to the STR profiles, in numerous cases, the persons have been excluded 
from involvement in crimes and have been exonerated. And on to the advantages of STR. And that STRs satisfy all the requirements of a forensic marker. They meet all the requirements to be a forensic marker. They are robust, leading to successful analysis of a wide range of biological material. The results generated in different laboratories are easily compared. They also, also, they are highly discriminatory, especially when analyzing a large number of loci simultaneously. It is also known as multiplexing. They are very sensitive, thus requiring only a few, a few cells for successful analysis. And this, uh, this process is relatively cheap and easy to generate STR profiles. From that, we're going to look at single single nucleotide polymorphisms, that is as in SNPs. The simplest type of polymorphism is the SNP, that is single nucleotide polymorphism. Single base differences in the sequence of DNA. SNPs are formed when errors or mutations occur as the cell undergoes DNA replication during meiosis. Some regions of the genome are richer in SNPs than others. For example, chromosome 1 contains a SNP on average of 1.45 kb compared to chromosome 19, where SNPs occur on an average of 2.18 kb. SNPs normally have just two alleles, for example, an allele with a guanine and one with an adenine. And because of this, they are not highly polymorphic and do not fit with the ideal properties of DNA polymorphism for forensic analysis. Well, the good side is that they are so abundant throughout the genome that is theoretically possible to type hundreds of them and this would make the combined power of discrimination very high and it's estimated that to achieve the same discriminatory power that is achieved using 10 STRs 50 to 80 SNPs would be analyzed SNPs have not been widely used in forensic science to date, and the dominance of tandem repeated DNA will continue for the foreseeable future. Advantage of SNP typing consists of in the fact that DNA template size can be as large as 50 BP compared to the STRs, which need the DNA template size of around 300 BP to obtain. A good STR, STR profiling. And due to this, the SNPs become important tools in analyzing degraded samples. That is because in degraded samples we don't have a lot of a lot of material available. Yeah. That is basically it. Those are the methods used in forensic for human identification in forensic DNA analysis. We're going to look at more in the next video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next. And remember to share, like, and also don't forget to subscribe to Miss Fountain channel. Thank you.